Because I have Joseph Sabiti. That is the uh, uh, the leading conservative and homophobe of the show. <laughs> so, guys, welcome to this all male chauvinistic show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, what I think that happened this week, and that was saving the world from that world. My, my my son Donald Trump won resoundingly for the first time in the three elections. He even won a popular the popular vote. He won all the swing states. This empty-headed uh, woman who couldn't explain herself and everybody was supporting her because they are racists also. They like fellow blacks. Hmm? Yeah. Just couldn't even uh, make a point and we understand it. I don't know how she went to law school. It was very good. She lost. Her and the cabal of war mongers were sleepwalking us into World War Three. So I want to begin with the Jim. I'm sure you were supporting Kamala Harris. How are you nursing your wounds? We like to focus on Ugandan politics than the US. <laughs> <laughs> US politics affects Uganda politics. Biden and Harris were pushing for regime change in Uganda. Well, I'm it's, uh, it's, it's very politics can be very difficult to understand, but also the loss of uh, her loss can be explained that she came in a bit late <coughs> and she given the time the short time she did exceptionally well and there's hope that she can still do better Rogers. yeah uh, i'm surprised that um, kamala harris was given platform and many people thought she would actually win very many figures and uh, the polls were putting her ahead of of trump and I actually knew that Trump was having it, uh, actually, but it's surprising that people actually thought Kamala would win this. It was very crystal clear that Trump was winning this. But for me, it was I, crystal clear. It, it, it was crystal know. clear. Yeah, yeah. actually, with, with Biden, people knew Trump was going to take it, irrespective of what. Yes, there, was no way Biden Biden, was, yes. there was no way Biden was going to beat Trump. Even the coming of Kamala, Okay, she performed much better than Biden would have performed, but there is no way she was going to beat him. And for me, I want to congratulate Trump because he defied very many odds. Uh, the charges against him, the harassment against him. I thought that is what built him. Yeah, but, but they were fighting he him. He went to court, I felt, and what you need as a politician is top of mind awareness. Every day he was in court. His name was on all social media, all television. In America, people just largely rely on television. His name was everywhere. So he was content. His political ambitions were every day amplified. He was getting a lot of publicity. Well, with, with all that against him, coming out and beating them resoundingly, not one person, Kamala, the Dems, and all the people that were against him. Even Republicans were against him. You, you, you have to give him all the credit. Yes. Yeah, uh, for me, I'm very happy. And, uh, Mr. Kayoni. Yes, I'm very happy. But um, you also supported Trump like me. Absolutely. Why? Why? Uh, well, for me, I've always been a person. You're not who, a racist. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm a person. Because Kamala is black. Every black person wants to support. No chance. Like I am. I'm those people who think that leadership should be absolute. I hate people who you know, can't use the words, but I don't like people who are not wishy washy. Yeah, wishy washy. You know. I want someone want who's strong men, like strong men. Yeah, uh, I mean the world, the <laughs> world. Yeah, yeah, almost. Oh, Adolf Hitler. I know. Joseph <laughs> Stalin. Even Adolf Hitler was very popular in Germany. He was very, very popular. Joseph, Joseph Stalin. Stalin. Yeah, absolutely. Idi Amin.
can put down troops. He, you know, he can put down troops. Yeah, I, I, no, no, well, no, 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 Trump, it was just a campaign that will end the wars, but how he, he, didn't, we... he didn't elaborate how he will end the wars. He simply said, I'll end them because I'm a big guy and everybody respects me. But the thing is, for me, what his win really was, uh, to disagree with him, is that everybody thought Kamala was going to win. Uh, the polls were showing Kamala at the beginning. When uh, Biden got out, Kamala came. She got a significant lead at the start. And then, you know, Trump kept building up up to the end where you couldn't really make out who was winning. But that said, this election for me was fundamental in the sense of media. That this time you got to see that uh, now the democratization of media where social media has taken over. One man, Elon Musk, has the entire viewership of CNN and everybody else. I think that played more to the public than, uh, you know, the CNNs and folks trying to uh, to hound people with a particular message. Okay, I want to come to Joseph. You know, my friend Conrad Nkutu is very voluminous in uh, things like this. So, because I was busy trying to juggle, and another thing, I just don't like American media. Uh, because I'm not, these days I have grown media too propagandist, or all media too propagandist. So Conrad was every day reading data, polling, studies, experts, and I want to put experts. So he bombarded me with a lot of information and actually convinced me that Kamala Harris was so in such a strong lead, there was no path to victory for Trump. But you see me because I'm a support of Trump and I do not have the time to read all these ex experts. On the day before the election, I tweeted saying, I appealed all Americans to vote for uh, Donald Trump because... Kamala Harris and her thugs are going to lead us to World War Three, and all of us will be incinerated. So, it, and I said, if I had 150 million votes, I'll just take them and give them to Trump, and he just wins. So then, on election day, I was flying from Pretoria to Uganda Islands, flies in the night. So I land here at around 4 a.m. I find Trump is far ahead, and so I said, Conrad had a message saying, "What has happened?" He said, he, told, he replied, "I have." Uh, I am baking a very humble pie <laughs> in my oven. <laughs> no, so no, I, what was your own position with that? Because I had lost hope that these thugs are going to win and they would be again in trouble. No, I had occasionally posted and made public and said Trump them all, I think from about three months ago. I had no doubt in my mind that... Uh, so you didn't follow all these experts? No, you see, one thing that Elon Musk helped us understand is that the traditional media is not as powerful as it believes. Um, with citizen journalism, facts, editorial facts are being challenged so the, the the sources of information are more multiple if you followed the uh, the, 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 the the walk uh, Kamala Harris leading media of CNN and what mm. it looked like the world was going that way but but uh, when you, the, 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 I think that Elon Musk played a fundamental role in the information war and, and he really challenged the mainstream media and went hard on it and provided alternative facts so I found myself following Elon Musk Really? Yes, and not I the... I follow Elon Musk, yes. but I was not seeing his tweets on my feed. No, because he was, every day he was tweeting about that election, yeah. I think yeah. for, the, for the last uh, one, uh, six months or something, every single day. And, and, not, and, 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 and giving funding. some money for... Yeah. And funding yeah. it, yes. Funding so, and, and for me... He gave 111 million. Yes, yes, every day one, one voter would win... Uh, one million US million. dollars. Yes. So every day. For him, he went for the the, the, the so-called media power. What, I think it's what in class they call the media effects. He went and challenged it and, and threw it down and then said, look, forget this CNN, forget this, uh, you know, traditional media and stuff, what they are saying. This is just propaganda of the Democrats. The fact is that the numbers are with Trump and, and, and I, I, I somehow believed him. But also, too, I think that the, the Biden administration, the last days have defined incompetence. What is the Biden regime? Yes, it has defined. It has defined incompetence. The policeman of the world cannot be led cannot be led by such incompetence, and that incompetence was deputized by the super Kamala Harris. I think that I think that the, the world survived a disaster. I agree with you. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you, Andrew. You as a conservative should be. Happy. I don't think that the <laughs> Trump is going to continue this crusade in favor of gay rights. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> nice. That was his winning ticket. By yes. that, that got him far. So, Andrew, um, I think even from uh, Trump's first term, uh, I think he was really performing well. The, the economy was, was, was performing well. But then he gets challenges uh, in 2020 when COVID-19 uh, COVID sets in. So that's where he gets challenges. And then the Democrats uh, capitalize from that and uh, they take over power. But from, from him, he has never from he has never allowed that he was he was actually beaten. So uh, when we cover, oh, yes, well, yeah. I, I, I really that's, don't know. I'm, I'm not so sure about that.
but so, numbers don't lie. But so when 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 we cross over, um, I, I think uh, uh, Trump had uh, better points to make even during the campaigns. So, for example, when you look at what is happening in the in the Middle East and what is happening uh, between Ukraine and Russia, I think he had better policies to address from what he said. What he is going to do might be a little bit different from what he actually said. But if you are a voter and you listen to what he was saying, because when you go to what is happening in the Middle East, the war between Israel and uh, and, and, and and Palestine, he says uh, this uh, axis of, of evil or resistance, whatever you would want to call it, is being supported or funded by Iran. And he think uh, he's going to uh, impose sanctions on Iran so that they can run bankrupt and stop supporting these people. So, uh, if if the other people lack uh, 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 weapons or whatever to use funding from 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 the state of Iran, he, uh, I think uh, in one way or the other. On that one, I don't agree with him. First, because uh, sanctions Russia have failed. I don't know why he thinks the ones on Iran will succeed. Two, already there are so many sanctions which imposed on Iran. I don't know what new sanctions is going to add there that will make sense. And three American policies have actually pushed Russia and China to bring South and North Korea and Iran into their community. And therefore, they, and, and, and as they change even to introduce trade within their own currencies, I think that it's going to weaken America's hand. Because previously, all of us traded in the dollar. Now, BRICS are saying, okay, you can trade in your own currency, or we can uh, trade using other means. China has launched, I think, a digital currency through which you can have international transactions. Everyone wants to bypass SWIFT because America is abusing its power as the general, as the central bank of the world and uh, abusing SWIFT. And I don't think America is going to continue to succeed in using its economic mate uh, to trump over countries. I think there is a, uh, it's becoming counterproductive. Anyway, we have to take another break and we'll be right back in a second. <laughs> Welcome back to this edition of the Hot, the Hot Seat featuring Japan with the most experienced journalists and panelists to discuss the major events of the week. I have uh, Rogers Magala. I have Isaac Kayonde, I have Joseph Sabiti, I have Frank Mujiba, we can call him Don Mujiba, and of course, <laughs> you know, just, first of all, let me guys give you my view. I have always been worried because Biden, I think, and his people are so reckless. They keep saying that they want Russia defeated in Ukraine. I have always wanted to ask Biden or any of his thugs, loonies, what do you mean by Russia being defeated? How, how can you describe for me the defeat? Oh, you want a victory. What do you mean by your victory? Russian soldiers get beaten. They leave every inch of Ukraine, including Crimea, and go back home. Russia is a nuclear armed state. It sees Ukraine enter into NATO as an existential threat. Russia has said it. Every American leader, including, including uh, Joe Biden, when he was a senator, has said the same thing. From a strategic point of view, they consider as NATO's encroachment on Russia's borders as an extension threat. Even me, far away, I can feel it so. What do they expect Russia would do? Because if it got defeated and wanted to rescue a defeat on the battlefield with a nuclear weapon and the nukes a city in uh, Ukraine, you are Biden, what would you do? You see, would you put the world into a Magedon, nuclear Armageddon in order to save Ukraine? So in circumstances like that, when you're dealing with a nuclear armed state, mm. you have to exercise a lot of restraint. Because you see, wars can break out even when two leaders on both sides are committed to avoiding them. Why? Because misinformation, misunderstandings, miscalculations can happen and escalate a, a, a standoff into a conflagration. So I don't understand what these people's thinking is. That is one. So Trump says, no, 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 we must end this war. Because if you don't end the war, it becomes ever more difficult to stop escalation. Mm -hmm. Now, this is Zelensky, one of the stupidest people I've ever encountered in my life. He's saying America should give them weapons to attack directly into Russia. Which the Those, Biden has been doing. Uh, uh, exactly, but that is escalation. So assuming Russia feels it's against the wall, why do they have nuclear weapons? Why does any country have nuclear weapons? The day they use them, I can tell you this world will end. There are so many books you should read. If a nuclear war has to happen, mm. the nuclear uh, of course, Russia will be obliterated, the United States will cease to exist, Europe will cease to exist, for us would not be nuked. But what would happen is the nuclear clouds will go up, seal the earth from the sun, then we'll enter a nuclear winter. We enter back to the stone, the, the, what do they call it? The only people, all the studies show that the only chance of survival of human race would be some places in New Zealand, which is near You see, Andrew, I wanted, I wanted to be very pessimistic view of things. 
nuclear nuclear stuff happen in Nagasaki and wherever those places are what oh, happened is that impact is I that, one. no I what i'm saying it happened in those areas the impact but is the impact outside are we suffering because it was a targeted attack so isaac isaac can i educate you the nuclear weapon one bomb that was thrown at hiroshima and nagasaki yes one nuclear weapon by america or russia right now is equivalent to 1500 in fact the zap bomb in russia is equivalent to 3800 it's explosive capability is 3800 bombs so don't the current nuclear situation is very yeah. different uh, and actually so the tactical nuclear weapons of today are 500 times so the destructive capacity and the nuclear ship cloud about 500 times at more. that time there are only two nuclear weapons yeah. now russia 6000 america 6000 you get it those 6,000, even if they use just 1,000 each of them, the world will cease to You see, Andrew, the strategies of war have changed since. Right now, we might look at the atomic bombs, but we have biological weapons. You see what happened with COVID-19. Uh, please, leave, can I tell you? A yes. biological weapon is nothing. When they throw a nuclear weapon, I'm telling you, these were pinpricks. What he has Nagasaki and Hiroshima yes. were pinpricks. The, how many megatons was it? 0.1 now the megatons they have i'm telling you one bomb mm. one nuclear warhead has a destructive capability of 1500 nuclear bombs <laughs> that was thrown at the guy yeah, but so, so for, every action, for sure even them they know that the others have and they have countermeasures no I, I think i think what andrew is saying is that the biden administration you don't want to take that risk no i think what andrew yeah. the point andrew is making that the biden administration had has failed A pre position of presumed, uh, pre presumed uh, policeman of the world and, and stuff like that. But but the Biden administration, especially in the last days, looked clueless on even how to guide just a conversation around the troubles in the world. I, I saw I saw a very pathetic attempt. There's an embassy in Kampala here that flew journalists to Kiev, and and, uh, and they came reporting uh, funny funny stories. And I saw online the narratives were challenged and many of them ducked. It is because even them they are failing to explain how you want to you know you want ukraine to enter nato and you think that russia should sit and smile and, and, and look at you an existential threat must be resisted therefore i don't understand how, when you say the war in in against russia must be won that means you're going you want to obliterate russia and they're not going to sit and look at you so trump might not be the magician trump is not the the, the, the sort of demigod who's going to come and solve the world's problems but the, the policeman of the world can do better than joe biden forgetting you, but you see for, for, forgetting to, to do the basic thing of even leading a conversation in the I by the way i should I also explain let me also explain to you about these nuclear weapons the following things the russians were the first to develop an icb an, an, uh, an anti-ballistic missile the anti-ballistic missile is supposed to shoot down uh, an incoming missile so when they did so the americans rather than go to the technology to produce one rocket to shoot down a nuclear missile before it enters the Earth's orbit. You see, when it, you set it off, and it's going to, it travels at about 20,000 kilometers per, per hour. 20,000. So it gets out of the Earth's orbit and then comes back. So you have to shoot it using satellites to shoot it in space. Hmm? The problem with shooting down missiles is that it costs you five times more to shoot one offensive weapon. So if I send this missile, costing me, let's say, $10 million, you need $50 million to shoot mine. So why did the Americans develop the technology to counter Russia's ICBMs, anti-ballistic missiles, rather? They decided to design nuclear warheads. When they shoot it off, it reaches, when it's coming to attack you, it splits into eight warheads. So one missile, you'll need 400 times more to destroy it. So it becomes, it becomes too costly. To have a nuclear shield that is one but the second thing also is that the other guys can send you dummies they can shoot missiles they come as dummies mm -hmm. so you think you're shooting they can send 100 dummies then they send another 100 nuclear missiles so you're shooting of the things you're shooting a lot of them are dummies they're not effective and effective ones can go through so none of these countries they know if you go into a nuclear war there are no winners everybody becomes losers even those who are not part of the conflict i cannot understand why biden and his loonies cannot see that simple logic, no, which no. Piece, piece seven kids, me when I was in piece seven, I would make this argument. No. I swear to God. Old man, you know, when you lose, everyone begins blaming you for everything. Mm. But do you think Trump will offer a very, you know... But yes. Andrew Mwenda has also followed you. So you sure. have made an argument mm. before that uh, I think you, you called it giving war a chance when you talked about having absolute winners uh, to sort out political difference. Mm. You've talked about it here in Uganda, you've talked about it in South Sudan when we intervened and everything. I have followed your argument there. Why do you think it is okay now to have such intervention?
stick it to you. Let us fight, right? So for me, I'm most... Like Vincent to me. Well, I, I, I'm just explaining. Uh, the point unless I'm I'm lying. is that this is not a normal war. Okay, okay. You don't threaten a nuclear arms. You see, Russia has, has one problem. Russia does not have conventional military capability to fight the United States and NATO. Zero. It can't fight them. So the only retreat, if they attack it, which is the nuclear deterrence. Which but the nuclear deterrence means the end of the world. So I, I can say it is better to have the stronger party win in a domestic civil war or even an international war. But that cannot apply as a principle in for, nucle all, for a nuclear armed state because it means the end of the world. So if South, South Korea and North Korea were to engage in a, in a fight, why wouldn't you... Why wouldn't South Korea defend itself against uh, a North Korea, which is... I am saying any nuclear war is an end of the world, because... No, but, but, but also, Andrew, it, it is a let's, let's, war. Let's, 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 get, let's just get the basics. Let's just get the basics. So, 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 so you think country, that you can defeat Russia and enter Moscow and they are seated on nuclear weapons? Because they are... No, what I'm saying... So, I'm no, saying... So, what I'm saying... Ukraine, whoever comes, mm, whoever comes is not coming... No, but Andrew... Just guys, I Yes. Isaac, do you believe that someone can attack Russia, enter Moscow, occupy it, and they still own nuclear weapons saying, no, we cannot use them? Uh, no, I, they will use it. Okay, My point if they use them, what, let me ask you Whoever today. is coming, he's also coming. Let, let me ask you this. Assuming the the Russia right now launched a nuclear weapon against Ukraine, if you're President Biden, what would you do? Well, Trump has also played that card before in his first time where he's... No, I'm saying, I have, no one has ever used a nuclear weapon. No, no one has used, used it, but, but what I'm saying, mm. if they bring the war around nuclear weapons, the U.S. will bring its nuclear weapons. That's what I'm saying. And what then, what, 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 what okay, will be the repercussion? So I want to you. Yes. The world there is and what the will be the repercussion? <laughs> <laughs> but, but for me, Andrew, so, I wanted to so bring... So that's why I'm saying that if you are a president of America, you have to be very, very careful. Mm -hmm. You can attack Libya. You can attack Afghanistan. You can attack Uganda. Don't attack Russia with 6,000 nuclear warheads. Don't dare. Because if you provoke a country like that, it is so difficult. I'm telling you, Putin may defend himself in a situation where if he not, did not use those weapons, he would be overthrown. Himself. And I think so, Trump has so, come so, in at the right time. Trump is able. I just I think, think he's capable of saying that. Yeah, I don't know what. Trump, but what Trump, the good thing with Trump, Trump has told us one thing. Me, I'm going to end the war. I don't want this war to continue. Yes, yes but that's good. So he's not how he's done it before. He's not. He's not given us the plan in that. But you see, he may fail. 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 Biden was saying we want victory over Russia. The victory which wouldn't even be defined. I mean, what, what is the definition of victory? But this man is saying I want to end the, the war. That's, 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 that's yeah, we romantic. may fail, we don't know, and we may still end. You see, Andrew, end I wanted, the I, Andrew, I wanted his to bring intention up. is sensible. Yes. In uh, in Trump's first term, he sanctioned Iran and he grounded them. When Biden's government came in, they. Iran is is Iran is lift, swimming in sanctions. sanctions. Biden has had nothing on the sanctions. Iran is swimming in the U.S. sanctions. The, the Obama agreement. Mm. He kept, and for me, I believe he found Trump, sanctions. Trump is a better negotiator than what the Bidens have been doing. And what and has he negotiated believe, before? And I believe he what, can what, go what, into negotiations. What, what has you he negotiated? How they evacuated the troops of U.S. from Afghanistan without having any casualty? See what happened with the Biden. But that's not negotiation. Okay, that's military capability. They, 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 they initiated they the evacuation. So in the last segment, I'm the one who spoke only. Yeah. So I just want to ask you guys, Trump's policy towards Africa. He says we are shit countries, he's not interested. <laughs> I like that. And we are. I want America not to be involved in our affairs. Uh -huh. So, human rights Taliban, what do you think will be Trump's policy towards Africa? Uh, will it be good? Will it be bad? I think it will be good. Because he will try to counter China, the, you know, the influence of China in Africa. How? Fred, you know, I, I think it's now time to go back to Agoa, Uganda, to negotiate, to be very open. But it will be like uh, the African Union, Africa, as a, it might not be Uganda as an individual country, but, you know, Africa, mm. they'll try to come back. They know that uh, China is big here, so they have to counter that. Rogers, do you agree with that? Uh, I really don't think I will agree with him, but I think nothing much will change, especially set for two areas, immigration policies and reproductive health. So with Trump's, with Trump's regime, they pay too much attention to pro-life <coughs> uh, incentives. So all those reproductive sexual
sector reproductive health uh, organizations, many of them will lose funding, especially with because the Republicans. But is it not, good for Uganda or, or and Africa or bad? Uh, for Africa, it will be good because wow. b because most of the people are pro life and they support what by, uh, Trump has been supporting the anti gay bills and uh, pro life against uh, abortion and all those. Uh, for me, I think uh, the, the the biggest question is that people are arguing a new presidency for Trump as if he has not been president before. He was the forty fifth, right? And the actions that he did then should inform us what is coming to do. To do. What are the actions? He did towards Africa then. then he had a I don't care attitude about Africa. And uh, is that a good or a bad thing? It's a good thing, I think. Uh, it's neither here or there anyway. He didn't care much. Uh, but when you look at his overall uh, policy, he, uh, Trump is more inward looking, America first. So what that does is that uh, he focuses he focuses his energy on the economy of, of, of America. And uh, he went on a war with China around uh, taxes and all, imposing high taxes. In there was... Uh, Biden came and reinforced him. He never moved the sea. Yeah, of right? course he couldn't. I mean, it was a, it was a thing of... Uh, if he had gone back on, on Trump's thing, he would uh, lose the, 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 the people. But how does it affect Africa? The dollar. Uh, during Trump's time, the dollar really, really uh, battered so many currencies around the world because now investments had... Uh, Gone, uh, you know, we are going back. He has promised to cut corporate tax uh, to 15 percent. These guys are 21. They had promised to increase it to 28. When the tax rate goes up, investments outside it increase. The dollar is out there, right? So that's how it affects us. So between this this second term, I really see the dollar strengthening. And when once it strengthens, then you know our currencies are weak. Then we have a little bit of more inflation in Africa. That's, I think, is where... But the overall... you want our currencies to be strong? No, I'm not a proponent of uh, our currencies being uh, very strong, but the, the, the rapid change causes a bit of disruption. That's all. Okay. The, the, the U.S. foreign policy is, it does not de depend largely on the whims of an individual. Uh, the strategic interests of the U.S. will remain. Um, there the are issues that the Republicans... What are America's strategic interests in Uganda and the region? Uh, America's strategic interest in Uganda and the region, I think one, uh, in terms of uh, their strategic interest in Somalia, uh, the, where the UPDF and, uh, and the other forces have been doing their, 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 their betting there, but also America has a huge manufacturing industry, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and its huge mineral deposits cannot be far away from the American rich, but also they must control your minds and, and, and colonize you and, and make sure that you're subordinate to their interests and stuff like that. So, at, at, at strategic level, the U.S. interests in Africa and in Uganda will not change, but there are certain things that come with the Republican regime, for example, the question of the, the, the human rights, gay rights, uh, you know, abortion and stuff like that, the, the, what I call the minute aspect of the U.S. foreign policy. But, but at, at, at a grander level, it's not like ours where Andrew Mwenda becomes president absolute and uh, and changes everything in the morning. The U.S. will remain. Uh, they're in the, and, and for me, I don't know why people are excited about the U.S., Maybe because a few Ugandans who run there and, uh, what are and go and hide there. What and uh, interest has changed overnight? Uganda, Uganda has no foreign interest. Before I come to that, you'll be surprised that... Uh, Can I give an example? Okay. So this is how Uganda works. Uh, president Idi Amin is, is president. Then Uganda is a member of the Islamic States. And, and things like that, and joints, and, 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 and things like that. And then uh, the East African community collapses. Yeah. Right? President Museveni comes and says, you know, he believes in regional integration and, and things like that. The Islamic uh, organization becomes a secondary party to Uganda. So in Uganda, it is very easy for a strong leader to shape our foreign policy around themselves. If Andrew Mwenda became president today, or Semu Uganda became president, the first action he will do is to remove our troops probably from Somalia and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And, 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 and so, I so find, this is... I, I find it difficult to agree with you because... If you look at the Obotawan administration, it's, uh, it, it, Uganda's foreign policy was based on three pillars. Uh, first was uh, Pan-Africanism, which uh, argued for uh, the continental, regional, inter economic integration and the continental union. I mean, the government supported themselves and has always argued that way. The second pillar of our foreign policy has always been uh, um, non-alignment, trying to avoid getting entangled in it. And I think all Afri Ugandan leaders have tried to avoid entanglement. But from Idi Amin. No. Yeah. Idi Amin never, uh, he was much more independent than all of them. He could attack anyone he wished. Then Obote came back, same was the same. Then 
of course, uh, the third policy of uh, the third thrust of Uganda's foreign policy has been world peace. Somehow we have kept it. You, look, you look, remember that Uganda strategically has to keep relation, good relations with Kenya because it's access to the sea. So even I mean, could anger them and go and apologize to Kenyatta. And Museveni has tried to keep good relations with, with them. Another thing is South Sudan. You know, Obote supported Anyanya. I mean, initially, uh, I mean, supported them. Seven supported them violently to break up uh, Sudan. Yes. If you look at our policy towards Congo, whether it was uh, Obote one, when they have the gold delegations motion, Uganda sent troops into Sudan. Could be seven Seven has done the same. There are certain elements Uganda cannot even change our support for the African Union. But the the, the non-alignment aspect has not been very consistent. The RPF guys moved from here as part of our army and went and... Our non-alignment uh, yes. is non-alignment we in don't... The middle in is, the, uh, so in this international power play, said, like between other things, the Soviet Union yes. and the United States, we don't... I agree. And on that, I agree. Between Russia, China and the Ukraine. US, try as much as possible. It's difficult to avoid getting dragged into their wars, but try to avoid. Now I want to come to you, Frank. So I believe that, by the way, so many circumstances make our foreign policy consistent. But uh, I, I want to ask you, Frank, what do you think is going to be the effect of Trump on relations with Uganda? Because right now, government of Uganda is nervous that the United States is, has been seeking regime change. And Trump, because he does not give a damn about us, he is not going to pay attention. And uh, and, uh, and and therefore, if you are seven, you are okay with Trump because you will not be promoting Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Odoki and uh, and Amanda <laughs> and chapter 4 yeah, like <laughs> they are not this kind of thing <laughs> okay uh, first of all and I would, I would want to start with the big picture uh, picture of Africa the benefits for Africa are not direct as such but they are really there uh, before before uh, did you support Harris or Trump Trump uh, why? Oh, he's, he's anti gay. <laughs> he's a, he's a, a homophobic. Even show. against abortion, I think. He's so, also against abortion. Uh, oh, we, shall, we shall talk about that later. He's also <laughs> against sex out of marriage. <laughs> and, 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 sex. and since he's not married, we assume he's a virgin. He's, he's the Trump of the show. <laughs> but, but also, when you look at that point of. Um, uh, uh,
ministry of works. Everybody was up in arms, saying all kinds of things. Where was it? It was, it was a, a South it African was, entity. It was a South African a entity, and, uh, private entity offering us driving service. They took it back to the Ministry of Works under the Uganda Driving License uh, Project. There's a project, right? Mm -hmm. It is the most efficient thing in this country. But more, ex more expensive than when South Africa was here. Whichever way you want to look at it, it is much better right now. The thing is this. You have Ministry of Internal Affairs. But there is still a private company running it under the Ministry of uh, Works. No, it's Uganda Printing, whatever. It's, it's, a, com it's a complex uh, project. But it's a project under the Ministry and of Works. And does, uh, yeah. uh, Affairs. There's the Immigration Department. And with all the things that it does, you know, but it is operational and it's functional and it has that semi-independent uh, outlook. The point I'm trying to say, look, we have two, and he put the numbers, 2.3 3 trillion in wages versus 2.1 in public service. Uh, 2.3 in uh, public service, 2.1. 18,000 uh, public servants, 3,000 and something in, in power status. You make a saving of a trillion shillings every year. That's $400 million. That's a, a huge saving to the country. But the point is, can you get that efficiency when these organizations are under the ministry? What is so wrong with the government saying, look, we are going to streamline our, our activities, put the, um, put the agencies back in the ministry, get better pay for them, and... Uh, so this let me so, agree. Uh, the argument you make is quite convincing. Let yes. me agree it is right. So I'm not asking uh, uh, Frank Mujima to be the last to say anything on this. Yes. 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 I had to speak speak on someone speaking. No, 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 no. no, no. Seven no. has been creating agencies inside the state house. You want to put corruption in your name? Uh, 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 well, listen, listen. Yes. 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 yes, but those so, agencies yes. have less, less than ten people. <laughs> and they are so effective in their ways. And and I think is agencifying state yes. house. Why does he think I think I think I think the starting point for government should have been to actually recognize that mistakes were made in creating this many agencies and take practical realistic steps to actually reduce them yes, uh, we, we need we need to look at the size of cabinet for example look at the size of parliament look at the size of many of these things okay, the size of politics with the, the size no, of no 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 if you're rationalizing yeah, listen, and, and if you're rationalizing the, if you're rationalizing the go rationalizing full full throttle uh, 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 don't see, don't don't think but, is, but uh, again, yeah. It's beginning with the public, with with the, the service. So, so the service uh, but about UCD, uh, Ma, Ma, uh, Jimmy and uh, Amagara, the doomsday scenario you're building is not there. I've told you that no, where no, I no. come from. No. I've told you that where I come from, yeah. we are number three look, in coffee look, growing. Look and you're saying ground, Jimmy, where have you been? Where have you conducted research? 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 Where have you people, the masses. You say, no, no, no. <laughs> the Saturday Monitor has coverage. Yeah. See how much you, the agency spends and how much they bring in. Yeah. So who said it's not going to come in? The issue was not yes. whether so they are who working. who said the money is not coming in well, because the agency no, has gone? Yeah, yeah. You're complaining they, about expenditure that, you know. Guys, you have accused the NRM government of incompetence. How can you, but the, how can you defend an agency of the NRM but, government but, but, so I'm, much? I'm, yes. Yes. I'm agnostic about UCD, but yes. I can say UCD does not rely on government money. Yes, it raises its own money. So if no, government, no, that's, that's, that's that's not it. But I thought that yeah, you, they, 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 you, they, you, they you is funding the risk. Actually, the, the biggest funder is, is, is not the government. Like, so it's not taxpayer money. It is. How? You see, I thought look. they collect fees. Is it from uh, coffee exporters? Yes, they get yes. they get that too. It's a lot. It will still be collected. Still government money. Guys, we have run out of time. Thank you.